Hello there, sword friends. This is going to be a quick chat about the Valiant Armory Bristol. Now, I haven't done really any reviews on Valiant Armory pieces before. I've owned a few of them over time, but I haven't gotten a chance to really do any reviews. Most of the pieces that I owned were before I really started doing reviews, and not so long ago I picked up this Valiant Armory Bristol. Now, I had thought that these were custom options that were ordered by Valiant Armory, but I later came to find out by the guy that actually owned this sword uh, sometime before the guy I bought it from actually had these put on uh, pre-Valiant Armory, or, or not pre, obviously post he Valiant Armory, as in it, it's not really representative from this part down what you would actually be able to get from Valiant Armory. And so um, I've decided not to do a review on it, and, and the reason for that is, well, the reason I do reviews in general is to help you make a decision on what you should buy. Uh, for the purposes of spending your money and if it's worth it or not. And I, I don't really feel that this represents closely enough what you would get from Valiant Armory uh, to, to give you a worth, to give me an opinion consistent enough where I could tell you what I think about it. And the reason for the grip on these swords is, is so important. This is a much smaller grip based on appearance, a much different shape. The pommel's a different shape, and I really, um, how that impacts a one handed arming sword. Uh, has the potential to be substantial in terms of how it balances out, how it feels in the hand, and all of that. And so, um, really a lot of the concerns that I have with this sword are in how it feels in the hands, and how, how it feels this kind of grip structure, and how, how it sets in my hand. It's not particularly wonderful or bad, I don't really exactly know how frankly it should be, but uh, that's just it. Uh, I, I don't feel like I could give you adequate information that would really help you in a meaningful way. So I'm going to forego that, but I will talk about some things because this format of video is uh, perhaps aptly suited to talk about the things that I do like and that I think they did well. Uh, so one, if I look at the Bristol, it's a $530 sword new, and um, in comparison, like the blade does not seem anywhere, uh, doesn't seem necessarily better polished than a Hanway blade but the lines on it do seem a bit cleaner than some of the Hanway blades in terms of the surfaces being less ripply. I know that's more of a, I don't know that that's necessarily as important in European swords, or at least the, the purchasers of said swords don't really seem to care about it as much. The profile and weight are actually uh, reasonably comfortable in my hand. Um, well, I don't know about comfortable. The, the grip is not terribly comfortable for me personally. Uh, but the way it feels, it feels like it wants to chop and move, and that's not that's not bad. Tip control isn't bad, but for a sort of this size, I would I would like to feel more connected with the tip than I do. Um, it it feels a little bit clumsy for the the size that it is, a little bit stout in the hand. And if I were using this to cut and thrust, uh, as well as as defend, um, it feels it feels a little bit more cumbersome than I suppose I would like it to. Now, frankly, I think the look is awesome. It reminds me of the look of the Sword in the Stone. That's a movie that I used to watch as a kid, the, the animated uh, Sword in the Stone from Disney. It gives me that kind of general look, and I, that, that's what I always thought was really awesome as a kid. And so when it has that generic shape, I'm kind of a sucker for it. Uh, I think this is a Type 14. As I look at Valiant Armory, um, you can see the, the difference in the guard that I'm talking about here in terms of how this guard looks in relation to the one that I have. But more perhaps importantly, I don't exactly know what they're trying to emulate. I think it's a Type 14, but you know, maybe... Well, frankly, admittedly, I'm very off in that I don't know the Oakshock typology system terribly well, but I thought that's what it was. The blade is secondhand, but the things I suppose I can note is that uh, it's not terribly sharp. I mean, it's reasonably sharp, sufficient for, for cutting. It's got a hex nut construction. Things seem quite tight, but again, this is is secondhand. It doesn't appear to have had the um, the geometry or anything adjusted. But one of the owners was a a very capable smith in his own right, and so uh, the geometry or sharpness could have been adjusted in some way. And again, all of these things kind of contribute to me not really feeling like it's appropriate for me to review it because I don't think this is something that is representative of what you could buy. But what I do like is just the general presentation of this sword. If I look at the fittings, these are blued fittings that you could get, the profile of the blade, the flats, um, and, and 
just in general, I mean, arming swords generally tend to have a certain heft to them rather than liveliness. Um, I'm less experienced. I've, I've owned, you know, probably less than a hundred arming swords in comparison to the hundreds of katanas that I've owned. So uh, this single-handed feel is, is cumbersome in my arm, but that may be appropriate. And I'll try to throw some dimensions in the box below. The other thing that I will note is where I think Valiant Armory excels, and this appears to be um, maybe without this this little bit right here, but uh, this leather scabbard is something that you do get with Valiant Armory swords, and I've had many a European sword, as I, as I mentioned, probably you know in the ballpark of a little under a hundred. Um, and very rarely do the scabbards come this nice. I remember getting some early Albion scabbards, and they did not have as much decoration. Uh, the I think this is called the chape. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know the terminology as well on European swords. Uh, it seems on really well. I can pull it. It doesn't, doesn't come off or wiggle. The leather wrap, it has a, a tightness along the seam here, which is nice. Aesthetically, it's just it's very charming. It looks really good. I can't really judge the handle and kind of the leather match, but how it looks aesthetically is just very, very pleasant. Um, now, that said, uh, I think this scabbard is original. I don't know if it is for certain, but it does come out quite easily. I don't have to really pull it at all. I believe there's supposed to be a certain snugness with the blade here so that it doesn't, it doesn't loosely kind of fall out. Um, this is secondhand. It is old. It is used. It doesn't appear to have a lot of uh, use in terms of cutting or whatnot, but given that the previous owners and what I know about them and their capabilities as, as as people that are able to clean this up and make new grips and that kind of stuff, I really can't testify or, or uh, attest to what has happened to the blade, and that's why it's it's tough for me to, to say. If, if it has been uh, sharpened and diminished in size, that may attribute to this. The other Valiant Armory swords that I don't really Honestly, I don't recollect whether or not they came out of the scabbards. It's something that I generally get in a lot of European-style swords, where they, they come out of the, the scabbards really easily. It also um, wiggles around quite a bit in the scabbard. It, it bounces around quite a bit. And again, I, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be, but it's, it's the same type of problem with Japanese-style swords. Uh, very often you get a scabbard that is made to a template that is then put on a blade that hopefully matches that template. But differences of millimeters, uh, or even like a single millimeter, can make the difference of whether you hear a rattling noise or whether it holds tight. And those are some very difficult production uh, measurements to, to produce. I mean, when you're, when you're hand grinding and stuff like that and sharpening, um, it's tough to tough to get things within that level of accuracy. So it's not terribly surprising for 530 bucks. And the fact that it is leather, it looks as nice as it does, and that there is as much kind of cool looking uh, <laughs> overall aesthetic to this, I think it's, it's actually pretty cool. Now, I haven't gotten a chance to use this a lot, but I have used some other Valiant Armory swords. I use the, the practical kind of arming swords to, to do some comparisons to Ronin Katanas some time ago. I thought actually uh, in terms of how they felt weapon-wise was very, very nice. Uh, they didn't cut terribly well in my, in my personal experience, but that is some time ago and admittedly limited. Also, I didn't do any effort in refining the edge. I was testing it on water bottles and tatami mats in comparison with a sword that had a Japanese style razor sharp edge on it. So my opinion in terms of the cutting is, is limited. It's limited in, in my experience. It's limited to what I'm recalling from that experience. Um, but when I when I touch this edge with my hands, it doesn't feel completely sharp, but it does have a nice little ring to it. Maybe you can hear it. I mean, uh, it's, it's a tight, tightly, uh, a tight feeling sword. Maybe I have it because aesthetically, um, you know, this isn't really helping. So maybe this is giving you an idea. So when I say it's it's adequately sharp, I mean I, I think you'd be able to cut water bottles. You'd be able to do some fun thrusting. Uh, you'd probably, if you swung hard enough, be able to to get through a tatami mat, but. 
Again, I, I don't know that this edge is really representative of what you would get from Valiant Armory, but it, it seems similar to what I have gotten in the past. Really what I give them accolades for is the overall aesthetic appeal. The, the look of the scabbard, the look of the blade, aesthetically how, how it lines up the flats of the blade, the fact that it isn't terribly thick. I mean, this is a thick sword, but it's an arming sword, so it's, it's perhaps made to, to be a little bit more that way. Other arming swords that I've had from, say, Arms and Armor have felt much, much bulkier in the hand, and they've been of a similar style. Like when I compare the Henry V Arms and Armor sword to this, Unfortunately, I don't have it around, but that felt like a tank in my hand. Uh, and Arms and Armor is, is known for, you know, being reasonably historically accurate. Um, so, uh, in terms of in terms of how it feels and how it looks, I I think it's honestly, you know, they're they're pretty solid values at Valiant Armory. I, I do like, I mean, for five hundred and thirty bucks to get something that looks like this with a scabbard that looks like this seems to be something that doesn't get represented a lot. I, I think you're able to find blades that perhaps look similar to Valiant Armory uh, in terms of what's available out there from other manufacturers. Maybe not as as uh, aesthetically appealing in some cases, but a close proximity. But the scabbards and, and other, you know, just overall aesthetic theme seem to be uh, quite a bit tougher to find. And so for the money to get a balance between uh, something that is, is formatted and, and thin and profiled like a weapon reasonably well, and has a nice aesthetic theme to it. it seems to be something that's often missed when I look at the um, the Hanway Tinker lines or the the more practical lines of pieces from Hanway. They're very lackluster. The same could be said of the Ronin European style swords. They are perhaps I think more durably built than this. If you're planning on you know splitting logs in your backyard or doing some very intensive things with them, this has a a slimmer. Uh, nicer kind of, well, basically what I would expect a sword to feel like, because they're not axes. Um, but it also looks quite a bit nicer than I think other other pieces do for 500 bucks. There's some misses, you know, in terms of the, the feel, but I don't know how much I can hold the misses against it, given that this isn't necessarily representative of what you would get from Valiant. And that's why I thought this video is an appropriate thing. So if you have experience with Valiant Armory, uh, and you can tell me what things they usually hit the mark on, what things they do really well, what things they don't well. If you don't do well, uh, I'd really appreciate to know in the comments below so I can look for it on other Valiant Armory Swords that I might end up with in the future. Uh, if I can do a meaningful review on a product that you're actually able to acquire from them, I certainly will, uh, but I think this video might help if, if other owners of Valiant Armory products or practitioners of HEMA or people with um, with some experience in this realm can can throw on what they think Valiant Armory does well and what they don't do well uh, I would really appreciate it as for me and what I see here and what I what I can say You know Valiant did I think they did a pretty solid job and if I were You know looking for a sword of this type which I you know I frankly think this type is awesome even though I don't study it aesthetically It's very appealing to me for nostalgic purposes um, this uh, This would be you know, I don't see anything here that is like 530 bucks is a total ripoff. Go fuck yourself. I don't, I don't see that at all. It, it seems like it would be totally reasonably uh, worthwhile to pay 530 bucks. Looks like there's some other options that you can do in terms of coloration and customization, which I also think is cool. But I've never personally purchased anything directly from Valiant. All of my experience has been with secondhand pieces or pieces I've got from people that have purchased it from Valiant. So I can't really say how well the service side of things works. Anyway, that's what I have for you. If you have any commentary, I'd appreciate it. And as always, cheers and thanks for watching.